For years, Ontario's college and university students have faced skyrocketing tuition fees and rising debt loads, as governments have turned their backs on post-secondary education. When Mike Harris was Premier of Ontario, the Conservatives cut funding to colleges and universities by over $400 million per year and raised fees a staggering 165%. Institutions were starved of funding, even though students were paying more. While in opposition, the Dalton McGuinty Liberals stood up for post-secondary education. Suddenly, it's okay to saddle our students with tremendous debt loads. So they come out of university now with, on average, a $25,000 debt. Why is it that all of a sudden in Ontario, we have decided that the future of our children is not such a high priority? At the urging of the Canadian Federation of Students, Dalton McGuinty promised to freeze tuition fees if elected. In October 2003, the McGuinty Liberals won the election. The Canadian Federation of Students lobbied the new government, and the government announced a freeze on tuition fees. Students celebrated this breakthrough victory, even though tuition fees remained high. Well, the first thing that we did when we got on the job was to freeze tuition for two years. Well, I voted Liberal last year. I voted because I was promised uh, a tuition fee freeze. I was promised a proper consultation process. We're going to lift that freeze. The Liberal government has just basically brushed us aside and set in place a policy of increasing student debt. Tuition will eventually go up, yeah. The price of bread will go up, the price of milk will go up, oil will go up, rent will go up, mortgages will go up, houses will go up, cars will go up, it will all go up. In reality, tuition fees in Ontario had risen four times faster than inflation in the decade before McGuinty was elected. Even if tuition fees remained frozen, it would take until 2043 for inflation to catch up. And I mean, no, tuition isn't toothpaste. It's kind of a denial of the reality that education is something special, both for those who participate in it and for their families and for society as a whole. The government then hired former Premier Bob Ray to conduct a post-secondary review, but the decision to increase tuition fees had already been made. In March 2006, the McGuinty Liberal government officially announced substantial new increases in tuition fees. Tuition fees for Ontario students will rise 20 to 36 percent in just four years. Tuition fees for professional programs have skyrocketed. By 2009, students in medicine can expect to pay over 19,000 per year. Tuition fee increases were part of the Ontario government's new Reaching Higher plan. The fee increases were announced by Chris Bentley, Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities, in March 2006. For most university programs, undergraduate, first year can go up by a maximum of 4.5%, second and subsequent years by a maximum of 4%. Consultation started in August. You cut them off in September. How dare you tell us you consulted? We are the richest province in the country. There is no reason why we can't have the best access to the country. We're talking about, at the end of a four-year degree, seeing tuition fee increases between 20 and 40 percent on that on those tuitions. That is, that is a massive amount of money. I'm a single mother of two children, and I have struggled for about, this will be my eighth year at Western. I have already paid, um, I don't know how much tuition, but I know that my student loan now is approaching $100,000 just for a uh, combined BA. So it, this is just going to make things much, much worse. He got to go through undergrad and through law school, paying the equivalent today of $2,500 a year. And now he's asking young people to pay $16,000 a year, and he's going to multiply that for law school, and he's going to multiply that by 8% a year for the next four years. So it's going to go up another 32% over the next four years. So it's going to end up around $25,000. So he paid $2,500, and he's asking young people today to pay $25,000. And, you know, I don't know where his conscience is. I'm barely getting through my second semester right now, going through all sorts of 
the crap with OSAP. I have um, personal friends that have had to actually drop out because they can no longer afford it, they don't have access to OSAP, and they can't fund it out of their own pockets. Basically, all my friends keep coming to me telling me how do I, do I have these books because they can't afford to buy the books, so they hope that I have them since I've done most of the classes, so they don't have to pay for them. Uh, in Thunder Bay's case, our economy has taken a bit of a hit. Uh, a lot of the policy is written in southern Ontario, so education is key for Lakehead University for us to, you know, remain a thriving community. It's all really hitting me that I'm gonna like I'm gonna work so hard for like seven years just to have to work for another like 20 years paying off like who knows like sixty thousand dollars worth of debt. I'm middle class. I fear for my life. Like my sister's in there. She went in with a 90 average. Came out no scholarship. They didn't offer her not a cent. So I think it's ridiculous. Even if you are smart, you're guaranteed nothing. We now have 8% increases in the uh, uh, graduate programs and up to 5% increases in the other areas. And of course, most universities are instituting those increases because they, they have to. Why not? If the government is not going to give them enough money, of course they're going to, they're going to introduce the, 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 the hikes to, to as much as they possibly can. And they, they are doing that. Uh, my daughter. She was living home, still she was working in the university, still she had to have the student loan and she has like $34,000 loan in her four years of study and this was affecting her personal life. I mean, if, she, if I could afford this uh, fees and she didn't have to go for a loan, then probably she would be enjoying her life more and do better in, the, uh, in her schooling. We're an immigrant family, so what they care about most is doing whatever they can to put their kids to school because it's so important because they've never been to school and they just have this notion that it's the most important thing in the world that they can do for them. They've worked very hard. They work long, long hours in order to uh, make enough money to support the whole family and put me through school. The government before the NDP government increased tuition fees by 42%. This government has increased them by 30%. Percent. I mean, there comes a point in time, Speaker, there comes a point in time when post-secondary education becomes something that's out of reach. What we've seen is a long period of attrition for the system, where the, the system is underfunded, classes have grown, um, the, the system has become less accessible, and at the same time, students are paying more and more. There's more and more pressure on students to go to university. It's basically a situation where if you want a job, you have less and less choice about post-secondary education. So it's a, it's a very forced market, uh, to use the kind of language that they would use. And uh, so I think students are suffering from an inferior education, and they're paying more and more for it. When there are fiscal issues that the province faces, the path of least resistance um, is to raise a tax that no one has to approve, right? I mean, tuition is basically a tax. The record in Ontario is that tuition went up and government funding went down. The Canadian Federation of Students this morning had a press conference asking, pleading, urging the Liberal government to freeze tuition fees for yet another two years. And why are they asking for this? Because students are being gouged. They're paying 43% of their own education versus 22% in 1992. They've doubled. With the increase that McGinty has authorized uh, to take effect in September, tuition will actually be higher in September than it would have been if the Harris government, Harris Eves government's policy of matching inflation had remained in effect unchanged from 2004 on. Bob Ray's review of post-secondary education was not a consultation. It was essentially an opportunity for the McGuinty government to send somebody to the communities to try to sell their vision of higher, of higher tuition fees underwritten by higher student debt. At the end of the day, when his results, uh, when his report came out, um, he was calling for the things that almost universally were being opposed at his town hall meetings. Bob Ray recommended tuition fee hikes and more student loans. But more fee hikes and loans just mean more student debt. 
Whenever they talk about financial aid, they talk about this benevolent system that's going to help students. But let's be clear, we're talking about, for the most part, we're talking about debt, access to debt. When we brought in the Reaching Higher Plan, we doubled the student aid budget. Every individual student now qualifies for more. Students today are graduating with debt loads that are 300% higher than a decade ago, a concern that Dalton McGinty used to share. In the face of exceedingly high tuition fees, there are many, many students, and this is documented, who say to themselves, I am not comfortable with graduating with that size of a debt load. High tuition fees actually, and, and some research done by the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations has demonstrated this, that the increase in fees has the most harsh impact on families and students coming from the middle income earners, that is from people earning between, families earning between about thirty-five and seventy thousand dollars. They are the ones that are the hardest hit by increased tuition fees. The McGuinty government has promised to invest an additional $6.2 billion in the system over four years. But the promise is not as good as it sounds. People are going to be excited because it offers a, a little bit of new funding into a system that's absolutely starved for it. Most of the funding doesn't take, place, take effect until after the next election. There's no guarantee that the McGuinty government's going to get re-elected. There's no guarantee that this money won't completely evaporate. There's no guarantee that we won't have a recession and there'll be another fiscal reason why uh, they can't do this. I always thought that if the government really wanted to make an impact on the system, it should have front end loaded the money. It should have put a lot of money into the system right at the beginning and sort of put its stake in the ground and said, you know, this is our commitment to post-secondary education. We are going to send a strong message to the Liberals that they cannot get away with spiking tuition fees and reducing access for low-income students and not going to feel a reverberation at the polls. Okay, so we have a team of three. To be able to have access, the right to an education, is something that's, that's fundamentally Canadian and, and that students need to stand up for that because if students don't stand up for it and don't make it clear to everyone else that they value their education, that their education is important to who they are as citizens, as Canadians, and as, as members of the world community, then nobody's going to do it for them. The Canadian Federation of Students is calling for tuition fees to be immediately restored to 2004 levels. By working together, students have won major victories in recent years. Ontario students won a tuition fee freeze in 2004. British Columbia has capped fees. Saskatchewan and Manitoba have frozen fees. Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador have reduced fees. And in Quebec, tuition fees have been frozen for over 30 years. When the Quebec government decided to cut student grants in 2005, students went on strike, and the Quebec government backed down. Today, Quebec students enjoy the lowest tuition fees in the country. We're here today to present the Premier of Ontario with 12,000 signatures. <laughs> this year, the Kitchen government broke its promise and increased tuition fees for Ontario students. Yay! We are going to use this year to build up the kind of momentum that makes it politically impossible for the Liberals to ignore us. Get involved with your students' union to help reduce tuition fees in Ontario. And in the coming election, vote for affordable, accessible post-secondary education. And we will see you on February 7th! Join students across Ontario on February 7th, 2007 to let the McGuinty government know you want tuition fees reduced. Visit our website, reducetuitionfees.ca.